This is Stefano with Stefano Espresso Care and I'll be showing you how to rebuild a Rancilio steam valve. We start with removing the softener and the water reservoir from the machine and we are removing the top panel to access the interior component on the machine. I mentioned that the machine needs to be unplugged and all the steam release. I'm sure I meant to say that. While we are doing this, of course, it's a good time to inspect the condition of the machine. I personally like to remove as many parts as possible to get them out of the way and to make it more comfortable to work. There is a screw at the very bottom of the back casing that requires a long extension. It needs only to be loosened, then there are two screws at the top, same thing, loosen but not completely removed. At this point in time, we can remove the casing. Once the casing is removed, again for the same reason of having space, I like to remove the divider. And in doing so, I also inspect the pump for any leakage. At this point, we have full access to the steam valve. First, I'm removing the knob. This knob is looking funny and broken. So we'll address that just as a replacement and we'll be replacing the metal clip that it is actually lost inside the machine and now it's found. We are now removing both end of the pipe, or I should say loosen the one of the boiler. We are using an 18 and we are using a 23 for the body of the valve to prevent it from moving. We are just loosening and bear in mind that the newer Sylvia have a slot on the frame, therefore the valve can be just slipped off. The older one do not. And therefore the wand will need to be removed first. Paying attention where the flat washer and the other one is in place. At this point in time we are just pulling out the valve and it is in our end. It is a lot easier if you have a vice to do the next step of this job, which is loosening and opening the valve. It is very tight from factory and I pre-loosen it just for making this movie a little quicker. We could also loosen the wand for the wand rebuild and just let it loose for now. Right now we need to access the closing gasket and the two O-rings. And we do that unscrewing the shaft until we can reach the tip of the closing nut there, which is a bolt or no nut. Keep unscrewing until completely out. Okay, we have access now to the closing gasket and the two O-ring. I remove the nut and with a pokey tool I'll be removing the closing gasket and you can tell by the groove that this was over tightened when closed through the years of usage. There are actually four parts that we'll be replacing. The closing gasket, the two o-ring and the copper washer. Those are actually part of the kit that we provide. I'm expecting inspecting the threads for any damage or wear. Everything looks fine. Move on to the next step. At this point in time, we are rebuilding with the new parts. Starting with the shaft, the closing gasket. And now that you can do the closing gasket 
first or second any matters. I just like to do it first. This is a six millimeter in case you wanted to use the correct tool for the job. For the O-rings, I just like to stretch them over, inserting the first one in the first groove. Of course, they are slippery, like so. And then, of course, the second one in the second groove. This part uses grease, food grade, of course, enough to make the thread a little easier to go in and out. And this part can be reinserted in the valve body. Again, grabbing it until we can. As soon as come out from the other end, I'm okay with it. I'm replacing the copper o-ring from the two body alves, and I start to screw the body in. Closing the valve all the way so I can tighten the back part, reinsert it in my vise and tighten. At this point in time, we are rebuilding the wand. Again, this type of wand it is only on the swivel version. There are several little pieces in here. We start we pushing the nut through, which will reveal a Teflon gasket that is located inside the nut there. We are removing the wand tip, and we are sliding the silicone wand holder. It is many, many times tight to do. A little silicone sometimes helps the job. Basically, you just have to keep pushing it down until it will eventually slide out, like so. So the nut can come off. We are removing this gasket. We are removing this gasket. Paying attention that the curved part will go eventually on the ball side. This one should be clean. I normally do so with a wire brush. The cleaning revealed a little of the chrome chipping off from the brass underneath. I do not believe it will be a concern, but only a final testing will allow us to know that or not. The cleaning with a brush, which for wire brush I meant a soft one, depending on the build-up, revealed a little chipping in the chrome here. I don't believe it will be an issue, and in try not to have to replace so expensive part, we'll try to rebuild it without, and hope for the best when we do a final test. In here we have the seat, where the ball sits on, and a spring. We clean it. At this point in time we can replace the spring and the seat for the wand. Just like so. Nothing complicated about that. Now we are back to the wand. By the wand tip there is an o-ring which Frankly, it doesn't need to be replaced every time you're rebuilding a valve, unless, of course, you have a leakage right there. I'm choosing to leave it. I'm taking a lower ball seat and just push it through all the way to the top. That's how it needs to be eventually positioned. Then I'm taking my nut, pushing it through all the way as well like that and at this point you push it all the way through so the teflon sits we have a gasket that will be positioned later between the two 
or you can choose to do it now and it's actually easier to grab than the older so I'm positioning this there and I'm positioning this like so I do like to put a little grease in the moving part as well not too much of course we are not trying to block the flow at this point in time again we try to tighten it as much as we can you can go pretty tight the one that will move freely because of the configuration of the internal part taking advantage of that being in there I can insert in the cover I'm using a little silicone grease just to make it easier and again this is a little fight to put back but not too bad the grease silicone helps quite a bit one tip again the o-ring there I'm choosing not to replace it and tight your rancilio valve is now rebuilt at this point in time the valve is ready to be reassembled on the machine we determined that the knob was stripped the new style knob comes with a clip included we are positioning the valve back on the machine and again i removed this just because it was easier to rebuild the valve but the order that they go in will be locking washer flat washer and of course the nut you can actually start them on now make sure the locking washer will stay externally to the frame you are inserting this part here for now i'm just end tightening the nut back in place snug so i don't have to mess with a lot of movement I'm trying to center the nut down here in the hole or the slot I guess and before I tighten completely the valve I like to reposition the copper pipe it's not a bad idea while you have it in your hand to inspect for scale build up and such I actually like to blow some air through them just so if there are any sediments they will get clean I'm just starting both of the nut leaving them loose in both ends I go back to my wrenches for the body and the rest is pretty much as self done as it was when we first move it just pay attention that your wand stays the center on the slot once this is tight enough tight completely the two copper fittings position the knob make sure it's spinning freely of course pressurizing the machine will give you the final test results but your steam valve is now revealed